start today on Kuf Ches, Amit Bey's 108B. Uh, we start from the words, The concept of Efshel was, if I have a piece of meat that absorbs forbidden flavors, let's say milk, and I'm sorry, what, 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 what are the first words? I say machmas bishulay is the first words on the line. Okay. Thank you. 13 lines up. So if a piece of meat absorbs a forbidden flavor, but then the piece of meat falls into a pot that is 60 times itself, so can the, because the forbidden flavor is spreading out, can the original piece of meat become back to be permissible? So we said earlier that that was a machlekes <coughs> between Rav, Rabbi Hanin, and Rabbi Yechanan, who said Aser, and Shmuel, Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Nishlakish that said that it's Mother. So now we say it's a machlekes Tanayim. And now it's not clearly a machlekes Tanayim. We're going to have to learn, we're going to have to deduce from a statement of Rabbi that it's a machlekes Tanayim. So let's see. The Tanya, as it was taught in Abraisa. A drop of milk falls on a piece of meat. So once it gives a flavor into that meat, that piece of meat itself becomes forbidden. And then it will go ahead and make all the other pieces of meat in the pot forbidden because it's min b'minay. And the rule with min b'minay, according to this opinion, which is Rabbi Yehuda, that min b'minay is not nullified. No, it's, it's the same type. It's all meat. What causes nullification is when something other than this overpowers it. But when you have the same type, more meat, even though one's permissible, or many are permissible, and one's forbidden, it doesn't nullify it. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. So everything becomes non-kosher because of the meat that's spreading into the other meat. When you say min bin mino, does that mean that a piece of chicken can trave up the rest of the beef and vice versa? Yeah, that's a big discussion um, uh, in all of what min bimina is. If it's the same name or the same flavor or the same, or there's a rama, I remember that. Um, for, for simplicity, let's say that it's beef with beef. But uh, it, it's a valid discussion. <laughs> Okay, so Div Rabbi Yehuda, everything becomes straight according to Rabbi Yehuda. Vachamim, and the Chum say no. We said Rabbi Yehuda says that the drop of milk falls on the piece of meat. Once it gives the piece of meat a flavor, the piece of meat becomes not kosher. Chum say no. It has to give a flavor into the whole pot. That drop of milk. If that drop of milk gives a flavor into the whole pot, so then everything is. The awesome. chance is it doesn't. One right, one drop of milk. Heavy, it's probably yeah. permissible. It's probably going to make the, everything uh, permissible. But the the tamborite. Is, is there a measurement for that? I mean, how do you estimate the tamborite? You, you have an the concept of both of a shishim. Fine. Right. Normally, the food gives a flavor into something else, but that other thing also has flavor. So and now I, you have to for, take for, that into consideration. Know, for a novice, for a regular guy who's how does he estimate when it's tamboritive and not? The like Gemara said before it. that we can use shishim as, a, as, as an indicator. As the indicator. That's unless you learn like Rashi. We had a machlek this Rashi tastes if it's if the taste is supposed to be after shishim or or if you have shishim you don't need the taste. You don't need the. So taste. it's almost interchangeable the tamboritive and both of the shishim. Yeah, yeah. Now so here it says uh, <laughs> in the halacha that uh, to answer that it says that if the drop fell onto the drop of milk fell onto the meat you give the food to a guy to taste and he can tell you whether it tastes like milk or it tastes is like that the Rambam? Uh, the, Some yeah, the, uh, the Rambam but Basar Chol was also a no yeah, how do you give it to well, how, how much did we have maybe it's not good on the guy to yeah, I think it's yeah. much easier it's if you. Sixty times deeper. To me, you, it would be more easy to estimate a a lot of a shishim than a, a nice and nice and done. Right. How, how much meat we have? We have 
Not much. No. Well, there's a machlekes here between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim. Um, there's a drop of milk that's falling on a piece of meat. Rabbi Yehuda says, if that first piece of meat that has the milk tastes like, tastes like milk, then this piece of meat will make everything else, all the other meat in the pot tray. The Chachamim say, if that drop of milk will make everything in the pot taste like milk, then the pot is chafed. But if it just makes this one piece of meat taste like milk, then the rest of the pot is not chafed. You so, put a little drop of blue cheese and, and <laughs> that, that whole thing is going to stink. I'm a Rebbe. Rebbe says, Reb uh, Chaim, when you went here, I was away. So Yaakov gave the share for us. Two, two days. So, um, yeah. Rebbe, uh, Rebbe says, on this machlekes, Rabbi Yehud and the Chachamim, just to clarify what's going on. So, here you have Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda is always Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Lai. Not Rabbi Yehuda Anasi. This could be confusing. Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Lai, the student of Rabbi Akiva. The one that's buried right outside uh, Tzvas. And... The Chachamim are just everyone else and probably his contemporaries, you know, the other students of Rabbi Akiva. Now comes along Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who's down here, and he says, I'm going to accept Rabbi Yehuda's opinion in a certain, with certain conditions, and I'll accept the sage's opinion, which is the other sages in, with other conditions. So I'm a Rabbi. Rabbi says, Nirendiv Rabbi Yehuda Kisa. I'll accept Rabbi Yehuda's opinion if the pot was not stirred. Rabbi Yehuda says the whole pot is treif. And I'll accept the, the sage's opinion, if the pot was stirred, kisa and covered. Cover, covered is a way of stirred getting... Stirred after the milk fell in yeah, or yeah. before? Yeah. yeah. Now the Gemara is going to get into when exactly it was stirred and covered. Stirred and covered. Now Rabbi Yehuda says that I, I, I only look at this one piece of meat that has the milk dropped on it. So if you don't stir the pot, so then it's only going to absorb into this piece of meat. However, the sages say you have to look at this piece of, this drop of milk in the whole pot. So Rabbi says, I'll accept that if you stir the pot. Then it goes into the whole pot. If you don't stir it, it's just on that piece of meat. I'll accept Rabbi So isn't opinion. that the solution according to him? Stir so, the pot. Yeah, but it's not I so can. simple. Let's see. One second. My lay near kisa. What is the meaning of... Mother always told you, don't stir the pot. <laughs> what is the meaning of lay near kisa? That it wasn't stirred in, in when we said... He accepts the opinion of Rabbi Yehud if the pot wasn't stirred and it wasn't covered. The assumption is if you cover the pot, that's like stirring it because it will boil everywhere. You know, it will... If we say, that it wasn't stirred at all, and it was never covered, why does Rabbi Yehud say everything becomes strafe? The drop of milk fell into the piece of meat. That piece of meat becomes strafe, granted. And the piece that of meat is sticking out. Yeah, we had a machlekes uh, Rashi in, uh, in, in the Ri. It, it's definitely sticking out. There's no question. The question is, I only have one here. If it's sticking out like this, that it's partially in the, in the liquid, or if this is sticking out, and the piece of meat that we're talking about it's is on top, on top of this, of it, even on right. top of that. So if we talk, if, if you don't stir it at all, <laughs> so how does this original Tray for piece of busted bechal a piece of meat make everything else tray. Mm-hmm. You have to stir it sometime. So, so what does he mean? I'll accept Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda's opinion that everything becomes tray if you don't stir it. If you don't stir it, then just it can't be everything is tray. Right? It's only that one piece of meat. Why can't you say that the milk fell on the meat, and you absorbed it, it became tray? without mixing now that the meat is soaking in the milk in the soup it's, it's not it's outside it's not completely it's not floating above it is. It. no it's not, it it's not hovering it is what does that mean no. that's what we just said no. It, no, you, what you're asking is according to the opinion of mm-hmm. of Rashi where it's halfway in right okay you're asking a good question the um, there's different answers to this one of the answers is is that is that okay the the, the where the milk is falling on above this above the line above the, the where the meat is above yeah. the line part of the meat is below the line 
Russia. No, what you're, you're suggesting Port is that... Russia. Yeah, what you're suggesting is that the meat that's below the line should now spread out to everywhere else. I am <coughs> sure. So, I think the... It's Machlik Zeraj ben Niran, how Chatich Anasas Nevela works. And as we're making this piece of meat prohibited all the way down, mm-hmm. but we're saying that the milk that fell on top is not really spreading below the line. The milk on the top stays on the top. It doesn't go under the line unless it's there. So can this meat without milk separated from the milk? We're sort of like we figured out a way to extract the meat out of the milk by having this line. So do we say that it's that treif, that it can continue on? The Rajba says no. The Rajba says that it doesn't continue. That you can't separate it and then say chatich anasas nevela. Niran had a different opinion. But, but we believe that like, like fat Spreads fat, fat would spread, but no, of, no, um, that's a discussion. I don't remember what it says in Shulchan Aruch. I think it says, I think it said that it was considered um, kachosh. It was considered not fatty. And certainly, okay. Uh, okay. It's a, you, you rate, this is like the big point. This is like the, the big thing in uh, in your day. Okay, so. Ella Lainier, the Gemari answers. Ella Lainier Betrila Ella Besaif, Velakisa Betrila Ella Besaif. We're talking about when Rebbe says that I'm going to accept Rebbe Huda's opinion. Bishalainier Vakisa, if it wasn't um, stirred or covered, he's talking about that it wasn't stirred at the beginning, but it was stirred at the end. What, what is it the beginning? That means right when the drop of, of milk falls in, that pe- piece becomes treif. Then you stir the pot. So now this piece of meat, this treif piece of meat, will make the rest of the pot treif. And I have to measure against the whole piece of meat. Well, actually, according to Rabbi Yehuda, I don't have to measure at all because it's min bimina. But the milk was going into the meat alone. So if it's only one piece of meat ratio to, the, uh, to, to that drop of milk. The Gemara asks, Am I? Why? Habala v'habala. But it spit it out once you stirred it. The Gemara says, it must be. Again, what, we will look, what we're looking for here is, can we uh, extract the forbidden uh, flavor in this by putting it into a pot that has 60 times it? This yeah, first opinion, to according to Rabbi Yehuda, this opinion, this first opinion, Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, is that you can't. You can. You cannot. You cannot, because Efshel Seich Deyaser. Efshel Seich Deyaser. Michlal, okay, but this implies the Rabbi Yehuda Savar. You see, here's the problem. The Gemara does this all, all the time. Rabbi is going to say that I accept this opinion under these circumstances. I accept the other opinion under those circumstances. Then the Gemara says, what it must be is that if Rebbe is only accepting this opinion under those circumstances, it must be that the actual opinion itself is, covers more than just that one circumstance that Rebbe is referring to. Because, or else Rebbe wouldn't have said, I accept it under the... must mean that they say it across the board. Rebbe is only accepting it here. So now we have to go back and look at what does Rebbe Huda really hold. Michlal, but this implies from Rebbe's statement... The Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Kinir Metchila Vatsayif, Vakisa Metchila Vatsayif, it's Asr. That even Rabbi said, I'm only accepting Rabbi Yehuda if you didn't stir it at the beginning, you only stirred it at the end. That what would Rabbi Yehuda say now? That, you, that Rabbi Yehuda himself holds that even if you stirred it the whole time, it's everything is going to be Asr. The Gemara asks, Am I Halaybala Klal? The piece of meat didn't absorb. Meaning it absorbed together with the whole thing. It absorbed pot. together there. If while it's falling in, you're stirring it. So the, so whole, pot absorbed. the whole pot absorbed. It's back to the Chachamim's opinion that it needs to give a flavor into everything. So the ch- chila would mean something has fallen on the meat and before it's been absorbed in the meat, right. it's still like a separate substance. Right. So when you come to stir it, you're, you're spreading that substance right. in and of itself. Right. And so flasof means it's been absorbed within the meat. It no longer has its right. own mamashos. Okay. Probably. So the best thing us, is to stir it. Exactly. Yeah. The best thing is to stir it. If yeah. a drop of milk goes in, stir it. Yeah. Right you, can, you can't. 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 You can't.
You can't stir it. You know how to stir it. So how is the guy stirring it? If he had that, if he did, if he had a cleaning lady, I'd have to say they're cooking it and she stirred it, then it's fine. Stirring it. Or if you spill it and you walk. Make a sign in your kitchen, stir the pot. Yeah, absolutely. Or if you, by mistake, spill something and your wife didn't know, she walked in and said, hey, let's mix this up. It's a mistake. Well, the very worst thing to do. But then it does it eliminate. spills in. Yeah, if it happened, then it's and fine. And you put the you cover on. The I'll wait till I can ask the Rav, and I'll put the cover on to keep it warm. <laughs> That's, worse. That's the worst <laughs> possible thing, right? Well, because now you've got the cover on. That's like stirring it. Yeah. But it, well, you've got uh, the cover. Uh, now, now you're. In. Uh -huh. Is stirring it immediately that slow chatzchila? Or, or it, is it the, is, is it do it intentionally with the idea of a bottling? No, it, but yeah. is, it, if a, is it if a person pours the milk in? That's the chol chatz sure. And after it's poured already, then it's b'diyevet. The whole thing is b'diyevet after it's poured already because he didn't apply to both. You have a good point. You hear what he's saying? He's yeah. saying mavatel is lechatchila is I'm taking something that's forbidden and I'm trying to make it nullified. And now I'm going to be able to hear it. that piece is already there. All you're doing now is you are, you're. It's already in, and now I'm just making it that it, the, null, the rules of nullification should work. So, so it's that's a little different. Evidence. That's similar to the Gemara that no, says, right let's now, say, it's also. Let's say I have something If you mix it, it was it done by be, mistake. It doesn't matter. Right now, it's also. Right. If you mix it, it might become Because, mutter. It, it, the, the halacha is like what Avon is saying, that it's, it's the same thing. You're not thing. allowed to mix You're it. You're not allowed to. You know, and the same, it, it, it comes out in these, certain things are not bottled because of their um, uh, chashivas. So if you cut it up, they become bottled, like let's say a barrier or something. If you cut it up, to cut up the barrier, it becomes bottled. So you're not allowed to cut, cut, cut up the barrier either. You can't grind it and say, oh, it's not a barrier anymore. Now it's bottled. You can't um, uh, grind, let's say, uh, uh, fruits that are infested with insects. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I'll grind it up and I'll nullify all of them. If you know that they are, you know, that you're not allowed to do that. What, when do they choose B'nais and Tam, and when do they choose B'batal Hashem? Why, why are they choosing one upon the other? When it comes down to the Shulchan Aruch, it's interchangeable. Okay. okay. Whenever, when, when, after you learn the Shulchan Aruch, and you go back here and you look at B'nais and Tam, in your mind you're translating it into Shish. So, The Gemara answers, according to Rabbi Yehuda, if you stirred it the whole time, how does it become Maser? Our, our, our text has Ema, Rashi's text has Shema. Rabbi Yehuda is concerned of Ema or Shema, near Yafa Yafa, Valakisa Yafa Yafa. He did stir it right away, but there's a concern that maybe he didn't stir it properly right away. And so therefore, even though you stirred it, and therefore you should nullify it into the whole pot, the whole pot could be used to nullify this one drop of milk. Rabbi Yudah has this extra chashash that maybe you didn't stir it properly and it fell on that one drop of milk. Yes, you stirred it right away, but maybe you didn't stir it well and it absorbed into that. Now I need um, Now I need to use the whole pot. Well, it doesn't, the whole pot doesn't work because it's min bimina. Everything becomes asr. It's interesting okay. because um, by covering it, you said I mean, covering a pot is, is, is like For us, it's it's obvious because our it's lids obvious. fit. I mean, we're, we're here. Our lids fit. In those right. days, they had to use <coughs> they had to use dough uh -huh. to cover the pot. And they, you imagine, uh -huh. it, like we we have saran wrap, you know. <laughs> they uh -huh. had this dough that they had to. They had you know, to it wasn't it a simple off. thing. Uh -huh. Yes, they had lids also, but even the lids they had to seal it with dough and things. <laughs> Okay, I'm um, uh, One, one. Yeah. If, if we're, when we're saying bottle position, we're we're talking about mavataling the piece of meat, not mavataling the drop of milk. Okay, so there's two steps to that. There's two points. In um, or not. Ra it, ra Rabbi Yehuda is referring to is your mavatal the, the the milk in the shishim of this one piece of meat. If this one piece of meat is so large that it has shishim against that milk, then it would be bottled. If it doesn't, then shishim doesn't help for the rest of the pot because it's all min bimina. There's other pieces of meat in the pot, it's not going to help. In the, in the sages, the Chachamim's opinion, I'm looking at shishim of the whole pot at that moment. times the milk, right, times that drop of milk, which that's, probab that's more probable that it's going to be kosher. Okay. Amar Mar. 
Amar Mar is the way we go back to a brisa to discuss it, to re-examine a brisa. So we already explained that Rabbi Yehuda holds Efshel Asaych Dayasr, because according to Rabbi Yehuda, you're stirring it afterwards, and it's not, you're stirring it, well, he's concerned that you didn't stir it well at the beginning. You're stirring it afterwards well, and it's mixing into the pot, but it doesn't uh, kosherize the, um, the original piece of meat. <clears throat> now we go back to the sages. The Divri Chachamim, Rebbe accepts the words of the sages, Kishanir Bekisa. If you covered it, you stirred it and you covered it. My near my kisa. What does it mean you stirred it and you covered it? E lema, if we say near besaif, that you stirred it at the end, v'lay near but you didn't stir it at the beginning. It sounds terribly uh, uh, familiar. <laughs> this is what you said with Rabbi Yehuda. V'kisa besaif, v'lay kisa b'tchila. You stirred it at the end, but you didn't stir it at the beginning. So this is exactly what we said. Ha'amrit near and div Rabbi Yehuda baha. We just said that that's how when he accepts Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, where you only stir it at the end but not at the beginning. In other words, Rabbi Yehuda had an extra, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi has an extra uh, uh, leniency over Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda said that if you stir it in the beginning and at the end, the piece of meat becomes usher, and then that piece of meat makes everything else usher. Rabbi says, I don't accept that. If you stir it at the beginning, then you're fine. He doesn't accept Rabbi Yehuda's Chumrah that maybe you didn't stir it well. When does he accept Rabbi Yehuda? If you didn't stir it at all at the beginning, you only stirred it at the end, then he accepts Rabbi Yehuda. So beginning is right when it fell. Right when it fell. Okay, because in the English here, he says the beginning before it fell. Uh, yeah. I don't know, it's a, it's a little bit unclear, but before it fell... How, how, could, that, how could that affect it? Then which piece of meat did before it fall on? Before the slice absorbed the milk flavor. Oh, before it absorbed. Before it absorbed. Before how it absorbed. Time is uh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. This is a... Uh, After it fell, before it absorbed. How, how much time is it? This is all instant. Right. Yeah. After it right. fell, before it absorbed, how much time do we have before that happens? Are we talking about, like, uh, milliseconds? Right. Right. In the, in the, you know, as, as time goes on in the, uh, in the writings of the, the rabbis, it becomes more and more exact what the halacha is. It's sort of like shkia in the olden days. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, I think it's shkia. <laughs> you know? And now we're like, no, seven, uh, eleven, you know, but how many seconds? So as to, as the Paiskin the further generations, it becomes more precise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Ella, how are we going to explain what Rebbe says that he accepts the sages? Ella, near metchilavad saif, kisa metchilavad saif. It must be that he accepts the sages if you, if you were stirring it the whole time, beginning to end. Mechlal, whoever this implies, the Rabbanan Sabri, that the Rabbanan hold, you see, Rebbe is accepting the sages when you stirred it from the beginning to the end. But what would the sages themselves hold? Near Besaif, Olay near Betchila, the sages themselves must hold, mm-hmm. even more lenient, that only if you stirred it at the end, that even if you only stirred it at the end. Kisa Besaif, Olay Kisa Betchila, it's also mutter. How is that, how could you say that? The piece of meat becomes asr, mm-hmm. it should asr everything else in the pot. Because min bemine alma kasabri afshel seich mutter must mean that the sages hold afshel seich de mutter afshel seich de mutter that the original forbidden flavor that's absorbed in the meat. So I bring a, a chair. It'll be diluted again. It will will it will be extracted, and um, the, the other chairs are more comfortable. Will be extracted and becomes permissible. That's a, that we've 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 concluded what we wanted. We we said Efshel Asaytes Machlekes Tanaim comes out that based on the way Rebbe explains or accepts Rebbe Yehuda and the Chachamim that the uh, Chachamim and Rebbe Yehuda themselves argue about Efshel Asaytes. Can you extract the forbidden flavor? Can it be just? I mean, I'm just asking a question. When the Chachamim says Shlita Baroi to Bakiu Lachatitus, if the pot is not steered, it's all like independent pieces. They didn't stir it before the milk fell in. Once it stirred, it became a good mixed chunk. Otherwise, uh-huh. each of the pieces are almost independent. 
and that's their problem. They're saying if it wasn't, if it wasn't. So you want to say that it was stirred even before? Before the milk fell in, uh -huh. and the whole idea why it needs to be stirred is because it's a conduit. Uh -huh. The rotev is uh -huh. a conduit to bring everything together. I I, I always understood from from what I learned. I didn't see this clearly. I understood that anything that's under the liquid is considered all in the. Uh, uh -huh. However, that's not 100% accurate, because there is a concept of Isra Davuk. Rashi mentions it later, that, that the, it first gets absorbed in what the piece that's closest to it. Maybe a point, I don't know. I don't know. I thought you said it was fine. That if you don't stir a pot, uh, the whole it, thing is it's maybe considered it wasn't independent. The piece independently becomes... Even if it's all under the gravy, all under the liquid? Maybe it wasn't such a liquidy thing. Maybe the liquid is only on the bottom and the whole thing. But once you stir uh, it, and now it becomes uh -huh. a condo. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Okay. So we've we've uh, we've reached our our, our uh, what we were looking for. However, Amalei Ravachmi Difti le Ravina. Ravachmi Difti says to Ravina. This is the end of the Talmudic period. Ravacha Midifti says to Ravina. Ravacha Midifti, the bottom line of the. Mm -hmm. Talking to each other at least. Yeah. Unless it's that Ravina, and then it's, that's interesting. He says to uh, Ravacha Midifti, says to Ravina, Mimai, how do we know the Befshala Seichte? Pligi, that they're actually arguing about Efshala Seichte, where Rabbi Huda holds Efshala Seichte as Asr. Even if you stir it at the end, it doesn't make it kosher. The Chachamim say if you stir it at the end, it becomes kosher. Maybe everyone holds that Efshel Asechti is Asr. Why do the sages say it's permissible if you stir it at the end? We have another Machlaikas. Machlaikas, do we say Min Bimine is Lei Batal? Rabbi Yehuda we know holds Min Bimine is Lei Batal. And we know the Chachamim hold Min Bimine is Batal. Over here we were saying. You see, Chachamim is just a vague term for the say, anyone that's arguing on, on an individual, we call them the Chachamim. We know that there was another Machlekes, Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim, where Rabbi Yehuda held min bimine is lay bottle, and the Chachamim held that it is bottle. So that would fit here as well, possibly. Rabbi Yehuda l'tamei, damar min bimine lay bottle. Rabbanan l'tamei, damar min bimine bottle. We know that there was Chachamim, come on, uh, I think that we are, we learn from uh, we, we had it earlier as well, that if you take from, uh, it says on Yom Kippur that Bulakach midam apar midam asar, you take from both the, the blood of the bull and from the blood of the goat, and they were mixed together, and you sprinkle it. And the fact that the Torah says, from the blo blood of the bull and the goat, that tells me that the bull did not, the blood of the bull did not nullify the blood of the goat, even though it's much more. So we, uh, Rabbi Yehuda learns from that, that min bimina, he doesn't, uh, two they're both blood, it doesn't become nullified. The sages said no. The sages said that's not a, that's not a proof. Because over there, both of them are, are sanctified. If one of them would have, uh, both of them are, are blood of sacrifices. If one of them would have been a chulen, it would have been batl. It's, uh, there's, in other words, the, 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 it's not perfect, the, the variables. That's what the sages say. So, when you compare it to other to other cases, it doesn't uh, it doesn't pan out. The Gemara says, "Hi, Mai." Let's see how he does a hi, Mai. It doesn't happen. That's no good. That's a very common phrase. Hi, Mai means like, uh, like what, what are you what are you talking? What's the scenario? What's the case? How, how does he put the English? What is this reasoning? What is this? Okay. It says Ravina says. Uh huh. Ravina is responding to Rav Achim Midifti. E Amrit Bishlaim. It is well if you say the Rabbanan b'min b'mina yihacha k'Rabbi Yehuda s'vehu that the Rabbanan over here hold like Rabbi Yehuda's opinion of min b'mina that it's never nullified. And they're arguing about Efshel Asaychte, which is the way we explained it before. That there's a machlekes if Efshel Asaychte is mutter. Can you extract the forbidden flavor and re-kosherize 
sort of like Hagala on a piece of meat. Can you do that? So Hainu the Kamri Rebbe, then we understand what Rebbe says, Nir and Divrab Yehuda Baha, but Divri Baha. The way we explain it. Rebbe says, I'll accept Rabbi Yehuda's opinion if it wasn't um, stirred at the beginning, only at the end. And I'll accept the sage's opinion if it was stirred at the beginning. But if we say everyone holds that it's always forbidden, and over here the argument is about min b'minay, it shouldn't say that I accept Rabbi Yehuda and I accept the sages. There is no accepting of the sages. See, there's one. There's some points here that aren't being that the Gemara is not spelling out. Rebbe it wants to say that the original piece of meat is also permissible, and he says that when it's stirred immediately. If the Machlekes Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim is about min b'minay, then both of them hold that the original piece of meat is not kosher. Does this piece of meat make everything else forbidden? That's a Machlekes. If I say min b'minay is loy batal or not. Rabbi Yehuda says that it's loy batal and it's not nullified. Everything is not kosher. Chacham say it is batal. So then comes along Rabbi and says, I accept Rabbi Yehuda's opinion that everything is asr if it wasn't stirred at the beginning, it was only st- stirred at the end. And they accept the sage's opinion that it becomes nullified. What do you mean it becomes nullified? You don't accept anything of the sages. You don't accept the sage's opinion. The sage's opinion is that the first piece becomes not kosher, but it doesn't make everything else not kosher. Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Huda doesn't never accepts that. Rabbi Huda wants to say that if you stir it, even the first piece doesn't, it doesn't become not kosher. The sages don't say that. So what, what Rebbe should have said is, I accept Rabbi Yehuda's opinion if it was stirred at the beginning, if it was not stirred at the beginning, only at the end. And I don't accept Rabbi Yehuda's opinion if it wasn't stirred, if it, if it was stirred at the beginning. But he should have left the sages out of this because he doesn't hold anything of the sages. So Rebbe's treating it as if the drop of milk fell into the rotate. Right, and it's, if it's, it's stirred right and away, it's stirred exactly. Right away, then exactly. it's, it's bottled in that particular piece. Is no exactly. different than anything else. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, therefore, because Ravina responds this to Ravach Midifti, so therefore we go back to saying the Machlekes is really about Efshel Esaychdai. Everyone holds Min Bamina is Loi Bottle, and no, it's uh, still Machlekes. Well, in in here, right. that's not our discussion. Mm-hmm. Question over here was: Do we say that maybe he didn't stir it well at the beginning, or do we say that he did stir it well at the beginning? And the sages say that even if you didn't stir it at all at the beginning, if you stir it at the end, you can make it permissible afterwards by stirring it later, and the, the milk will spread out. Sulaimidi, sulaimidi means like case closed. Like 